conclude tonight by saying that we need to draw some lines in regard to music in our churches, in our Christian homes, our personal lives. We need to draw some lines and set up some walls. And the best place to draw a line in the area of music is at the safest place. That's not a difficult concept. Philippians 1.10 says that we should approve things that are excellent, not borderline, questionable. Well, I don't know. Well, what about this music? You know, is it so bad? Well, if it's questionable, don't use it. It's that simple. Just good, unquestionably spiritual, sacred Christian music, music that does not sound like the world. Our Music that we use in our church should never sound like the world. Music that does not have a charismatic association. We should not be borrowing from that, that very dangerous charismatic movement, which is where most of the contemporary music is coming from. Music that has a clear and unquestionably scriptural message. That's the kind of music we should draw. That's the line we should draw. If we draw that line, we won't ever get into trouble. Let me say in conclusion tonight that we need to beware of the rock beat because it is a carnal and fleshly thing. It is a drug. Rock and roll music is a drug. And, uh, and it feeds the flesh unquestionably. That is the drawing power of that music. It's powerful music. But it does not feed the spirit. We played a lot of it tonight. We need to beware of incrementalism and desensitization. You heard of the frog in the pot? That's how the world comes in to Christian lives, families, and churches. It doesn't come all at one big lump. It comes slowly. Just sneaking in. Just sneaking in. And so we have to be always on guard. The devil never gives up. If he doesn't succeed one way, he'll come around the other way. Always trying to come, always trying to bring the world. One man wrote to me last year. He said, I see this decline in standards in my local church. As contemporary-ish music gains more and more acceptance and the pastors and deacons refrain from placing a limit. Refrain from placing a limit. There's the battleground. More and more. Contemporary-ish and then contemporary and then out and out, full-blown rock and roll. He said, in the last 15 years, these musical trends, at first rare, have grown in frequency, force, and acceptance. That's how it comes, and that's why we need to be so careful about the music that we use in our churches. We need to be especially careful about background tapes and specials. When I was in the Philippines, we would sing good congregational songs, and it would be traditional. It would be sacred. It would be spiritual. It would not remind you at all of the world. And then they'd say, and then the pastor would say, well, come on up here, you young people. I want to hear you sing now. And the background tape would come on, and the backbeat would go, and then we're in a nightclub. Just like that. Why? The background music, the special music, not being careful about it. A lot of the background tapes are made by an organization called Soundtrack. I called them one day, and Dan, Dan there said, um, I asked them, I said, what standards do you have for you musicians, spiritual standards, that play these background tapes? He said, what do you mean? I said, well, what kind of churches do they attend, and, and, and what kind of Christian, Christians are they? He said, oh, no, we, we don't have any spiritual standards for the musicians. They don't necessarily go to church. Some are out of Nashville. We just use good musicians. Good old lost musicians. No wonder they don't know spiritual rhythms from unspiritual. Be especially careful about background tapes and specials. And we need to beware of the slippery slope of failing to hold to high moral standards. Gordon Sears, before he died, I saw him the day before he died. He died that night, but, but I had met him finally and had wanted to meet him for a long time. Daughter said he got so excited he died that night. Now that's what she said. When this, he had wanted to meet, he didn't wanted to meet for a long time. He had a bad heart. When the standard of music 
in a church is lowered, then the standard of dress is also lowered. When the standard of dress is lowered, then the standard of conduct is also lowered. How you dress is a moral issue, ladies. Amen. When the standard of conduct is lowered, the sense of value in God's truth is lowered. When the standard of God's truth is lowered, then we have spiritual anarchy. Starting with music, that's what he had just termed, very wise man. We need to beware of building bridges to the world. Bridges to the world from our churches. You would think that we'd be wise enough not to do that. I know a man in the Bible that did that. He was kin to Abraham and his name was Lot. Before the Lord saved my soul, one young person says, I slipped around behind my parents' backs and listened to contemporary Christian music. This music softened me to the music I would later listen to. Softened, leading a bridge to the world. Country western is just as worldly and wicked as rock or rap. We need to beware tonight of being religious but lost. Where does spiritual discernment come from? Where does a spiritual conviction to turn away from the world come from? Not from religion, from salvation. I had a conversation with the leader of the Bible Society in Calcutta years ago in the early 80s. And I told him how I was saved when I was 23 years old in a motel room in Daytona Beach, Florida. And I, explained, I described that to him and how my life was changed. And then I said, well, how was it with you? How did you become a Christian? He said, oh, with me it wasn't like that. He said, I'm a third generation Christian. But according to the Bible, there's no such thing. Jesus said you must be born again. We need to beware of being religious but lost. It's salvation. It's the new birth that gives us spiritual discernment. If you're offended when somebody talks about separating from the world, you need to ask yourself why. I certainly used to be. My daddy couldn't tell me one thing. No, sir, he wouldn't tell me one thing. Neither would anybody else. Why, I was lost. I was lost. And let me say in conclusion tonight, private listening and holy living is the key to the battle for music in our churches. It's what we listen to every day. If we love worldly music every day, most of the members in the church... It won't be long before that music is in the church. Warden Sears says the mind of today's Christian has become so amalgamated into thinking just like the world, he can no longer differentiate between music that's holy from music that's profane and of the flesh. Tolerance sets in when families gravitate to watching the immorality, vulgarity, obscenity, and violence which at the same time promotes ungodly music into the home by way of television. They soon become accustomed to it, and it no longer offends them. Private listening and holy living is the key to victory in regard to music in our churches. Pastor, would you come? Oh,